up. Today we're going to talk about the book of Matthew. Like last Sunday, uh, Pastor Jonathan uh, Parker studied Matthew chapter one verses one through seventeen. We will continue that chapter one verses eighteen through twenty-five. Okay, here we go. The Matthew chapter one verses eighteen through twenty-five. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke, from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. And everyone said, Amen to that. Are you chosen? Have you thought about that? It is great to be chosen. If you have, if you have a friend, you are chosen by your friend to be a friend. If you are married, that you have been chosen by your spouse. If you pass a job interview, that you were chosen by your employer. If you're like me, who love to play sports, that you might have an opportunity to play like pickup games, right? No, pickup games is the people just got together and there's no specific teams, so we usually divide. Uh, teams in two ways, I mean two different teams, and we have to pick some captains, and those captains will decide to uh, choose which person, player, went to their own team. And if you happen to have that opportunity, it is great to be chosen for the first person, right? That means that you're the best player. Like, yeah, call my name. It is great to be chosen by people, but even, it, it will be even greater an honor and privilege to be chosen by God. That is why I ask you this question, are you chosen? Found the person next to you asking this question, are you chosen? Are you chosen by God? See, Jews had pride because they were chosen people by God. Jesus' disciples were called by Jesus himself. Come, follow me, Jesus said to them. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. He just said, are you chosen by God? I know you said to each other because I say so, but do you believe that you're chosen by God? Do you remind yourself that you are chosen by God? Because Christians are the people who are chosen by God. Like Jesus said, we did not choose God, but God chose us. You did not choose God, but God chose you. And if you are chosen by God, then you must live a chosen life. That's what we're going to talk about today. Today's story is one of the most famous or important figures in the Bible, and that is Joseph. But the Bible does not talk about him much at all. He is adoptive father of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was chosen by God. He was not just chosen by God, but he was chosen to carry an awesome task. He needed to be a path for the Son of God to come to this world, and he was asked to raise him. Even though we don't know much about him or his life, then I'm sure Joseph lives verses in today's story when you read this. Now, what kind of life is chosen life then? That's what we're going to talk about. What kind of life is chosen life? Three important truths. The first chosen life is complicated life. And chosen life is courageous life. And chosen life is committed life. Normally when I pray, I pray and then prepare a message. I don't have a specific like, desire. Or I know you said, well, I'll pick up some you know, words 
playing more or something. Um, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's just like, oh, the words come. And like God is like throwing the words to me like, wow, wow. If you don't care about this today's sermon, just count all the C words you're going to hear from me today. I didn't pick. I didn't choose. Choose the C word. <laughs> God just threw it at me. Anyway, so first, the chosen life is a complicated life. I want to challenge all of us to live chosen life. I want to really, all of us to recognize that and remind ourselves we are chosen. Now, when we are chosen, that our life will be complicated life. Is there anyone here who loves to have complicated life? Do you pray this every day? God, my life is so simple, so easy, so boring. Can you give me some complicated life? I want to have those excitement in my life. Make it complicated. How many people pray like that? I don't think any of us pray like that. I think we all of us pray, Lord, help me so I can have comfortable life. We don't want to have a complicated life. We'd rather have comfortable life. That is a goal for many of us, most of us. How can I get a good education so that I can make good money, so I can make my life very comfortable? That's the world we're looking for. And that is why many young people do not want to get married or have children. Because more people means more headache. They don't want that. All the technology that we enjoy, right? And that makes us very lazy because we are comfortable. Many young people don't know how to write anymore because of computer. Many people don't know how to add or subtract or multiply because of calculators. I thank God for GPS. How many of us do that? But that GPS make me very lazy. My sense of direction is getting worse. We become a couch potato because of remote controls. See, we want to have a more comfortable life. And people work hard, spend time and effort, a lot of money to make that happen. But God wants us to have more complicated life. Because if we want to carry God's mission, we would have a complicated life. We better have a complicated life. And that is what happened to Joseph. See, the Bible does not describe what kind of life Joseph lived. And we don't even know his age. Not many people argue about Mary being a teenager. Maybe a little younger, maybe a little older, but they all kind of agree, oh yeah, Mary was a teenager. But the full, as for Joseph, many people disagree. Some people say, Joseph must be a teenager, maybe a little older than Mary, but still a teenager. Or some other people, no, he probably about 30s. Now, some people say he was 90s. Some article or some document state or something. So people don't even agree on how old Joseph was. But whether he was a teenager or 30s or even 90s, one thing for sure that what the Bible tells us today is he was waiting to marry. Mary and Joseph were waiting to, be, to marry to each other. Verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, it says. Right? And before they came together. So what does that mean? When it says betrothed, that means that they pledged to marry. Now, for us to understand exactly what's going on here, you have to understand that a Jewish wedding, unlike ours, when we say engagement, that's a promise to be married and then prepare for the wedding itself. Now, when they said engagement, that happens really early in their age, when they're really children at a young age, the parents, the verbal agreement, yeah, your son, my daughter, let's they let them get married. That like good old Korean culture in a way. You know? They find that out who they're supposed to marry later in their life. Oh, I didn't know my parents promised that to each other. And that's what happened to Jewish culture. That's what they call engagement, which is not that hard to break it because the parents are the one who made the promise to each other. Now, better to betrothal is the second period. That means it's, they actually signed the document, legal, uh, uh, legal document, and they were considered as a husband and wife even though they are not physically together. But they're waiting for one year. And this is what the Jewish culture has, betrothal. 
And that's what the, this uh, verse 18 explains, that when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, placed to Mary, they signed the document, say, hey, we are husband and wife, even though we are not physically together yet. Before they came together, this is a third stage, they are coming together. So engagement, verbal agreement by the parents, and then, then when they become adults, they sign the legal document, say, we are husband and wife, but they wait for one year. Until they get together physically. Now, I can imagine that one year is a pretty exciting moment. You're waiting for their future, like planning, and then I know this wife to be, I know this husband to be of mine, and then we're going to get together. That's a pretty nice moment to wait, even though one year seems a little long sometimes. But the complication came to Joseph. Mary was found to be pregnant. Now, every time I read this scripture and talk about it, I just throw out my imagination. Like, you know. And Joseph was waiting to be married, this merry young woman, and get excited about it. Now, one day, Mary came to Joseph and was telling Joseph, like, guess what, Joseph? What? I am pregnant. Have you imagined? Can you imagine that? Your fiancé came to, came to you, and one day, or comes to you one day, and they say, guess what? I'm pregnant. That's Shocking enough, right? That's heartbroken enough. That's like, what do you mean? And then the Mary continues that, but you wouldn't believe this. I am pregnant from the Holy Spirit. You know, this is a son of God. I'm caring. Now, I just imagine Joseph's mind. Like when you hear that from the woman you love and you plan to marry and telling you that, it's like, you know, Mary is crazy now. Well, she's a bad liar. Mary, if you want to lie to me, make some, something, make it out, something I can trust and can, can, can believe. How can you say that you're pregnant from the Holy Spirit and you're carrying the Son of God? And I just think that's our natural response. If any of us hear this, our natural response is first start with a disbelief, like, wait a minute doesn't make sense. I cannot believe this, that this is happening to me. I mean, I'm waiting for this exciting moment of getting married, and my fiancé is telling me she's pregnant. Wait a minute. So it's this beliefs, and then it continues to the distrust. Like, wow, how can I trust this woman anymore? And then when you then this becomes like disappointment, and I thought she was a good woman to be married. So when you have this, the, this belief, and then distrust, and then disappointment, and then next one is what? Divorce, and I'm sure many couples go through a problem, went through something like this, like, and the disbelief thing happened, and then distrust start happening, and then obviously you disappointed each other, and next thing you think about is like divorcing, like let's finish this relationship. That's exactly what Joseph was thinking. Verse 19, and her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame. Resolved to divorce her quietly because Mary told him okay, that before they came together, she was found pregnant from the Holy Spirit. And then Joseph was thinking, like, let's just stop here. And when you hear this word from the Mary, like an unimaginable thing, you, know, you probably go through all struggles. But the Bible says that Joseph was a just man. Now, I like the NIV translation, this part better, because ESV says just man, and NIV says Joseph was faithful to the law. It makes more sense. He was faithful to the law, so Joseph could not really accept Mary, because as far as Joseph is concerned, Mary broke the law. You committed adultery. I cannot believe you are pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So you committed adultery, I cannot accept you. This way, because you broke the law. He was just a man, but unwilling to put her to shame. ESV says, and unwilling to put her to shame. But NIV says, but. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, even though Joseph was just a man, even though Joseph was really faithful to the law, and according to the law, that Mary could be stoned to death, but Joseph did not want to put her to shame. Meaning, Joseph did not want to harm Mary. And the best way he could think about is just divorcing her quietly. And I'm 
pretty sure Joseph cried out to God many times when he tried to figure this out. Say, God, why is it happening to me? What did I do to, to deserve this? God's answer? Because you're chosen by me. And God sent an angel to Joseph to help him. Verse 20. But as he considered these things, I'm sure he struggled, get frustrated. You know, I don't know what to do with this. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So angel came to Joseph. Angel was telling Joseph the same thing that he heard from the Mary. Even though Joseph could not believe Mary, Joseph had to take this more seriously because the angel came to him. And in their culture, in Jewish culture, dream was very important. God was speaking to many people in their dreams. So when he was frustrated and then struggled and considered what to do, how to do this thing, and the angel of the Lord came to him and enlightened him in a way. Do you believe angel exists? Do you believe angel exists even now? Do you believe the angel, that God can send the angel to you and me even today? Maybe it's not the exact same way that God sent the angel to Joseph, but I believe angel exists. I believe sometimes the angel protects me in some dangerous situation that I could not explain. It had to be an angel. Sometimes I get enlightened by it, like, wow, I didn't realize that. I believe the angel is knocking my door and wake me up. Whatever God did in the Bible, I believe God can do now. You know, I believe God can use you as an angel or somebody else. So turn to person next to you saying, you can be an angel. You can be an angel to other people. God can call you and say, why don't you go and help them out, enlighten them, like I'm sending this angel to Joseph, right? But the angel came to Joseph, and then he told Joseph a couple of things. One, you better know who you are. Angel was telling Joseph, says, you, Joseph, the son of David, you are chosen by God because you are descendants of chosen one, the David. Do you know who you are? See, God is always telling me, and I hope he's telling you, and always every morning, do you know who you are as a Christian? The Christians are people who are chosen by God for God's glory. Do you know who you are? You are sons of God. You are daughters of God. That's what uh, Joseph was Joseph heard from the angel and said, Joseph, the son of David. And second thing is that the angel is telling Joseph is what to do. He says, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Do not fear. That when angel comes to me and hopefully to you and reminds you, say, do you know who you are? Do you know what you're supposed to do? Do you know you're supposed to believe the truth that coming of the son of God is what happened in the Christmas, the Christmas season, right? So the angel came to Joseph and then reminded him. In verse 21, she will bear a, uh, a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Now it's getting even worse. right? What Joseph's facing, the complicated life of Joseph is getting worse. The fact his fiancée is pregnant without a man is unthinkable. How can it be possible? Now this pregnancy is by the Holy Spirit it's unbelievable. And this pregnant, being pregnant with a baby who is a savior of the world is unimaginable. Like, wow. My fiance getting pregnant is one bad thing, but it's getting worse, worse as far as Joseph is concerned. And I'm sure he's asking God, said, like, God, why is happening? God answered, what is that? Because you are chosen by me. When you go through your life, and I'm sure you have many questions sometimes, God, why is it happening to me? Why am I have to go through, through this? Sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be hard. And God answer is what? Because you are chosen by me. Joseph heard that answer. And then verse 22, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. 
Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So when Joseph was getting like really getting hard time and heard this message from the angel of the Lord says, "You are chosen," then he has realized that the plan was done years ago. See, what God prophesied to Isaiah more than 700 years before is getting fulfilled through Joseph and Mary. So, if you think your life is just for you, think again. I'll say this again. If you think your life is for you, think again. If you're chosen by God, you are not just living for you or for your family. You are a part of God's plan. You must care for God's people. You must strive for God's pleasure. See, our life has eternal consequences. Your life, my life, if we are chosen by God, our life has eternal consequences consequences for us and for others. That is our life, chosen life. Of course, our life will be more complicated than other people. So get ready to go through many challenges in your life. And I hope whenever you face challenge like Joseph was going through, then you hear this angel. You are going through this because your chosen by me. The second is chosen life is a courageous life. Now, verse 4, 24, when Joseph walked from sleep, he did as an angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took his wife. Just think. Joseph woke up from his sleep. He just had a little conversation with the angel. And do you think he comprehended everything the angel told him? Or he was still confused? Oh, of course! Why didn't I know that? Angel told me this and it all makes sense now. Mary is pregnant by the Holy Spirit because the Son of God needs to come to the world as a baby. She was chosen, and I was chosen to have this child, the Savior, the Savior of the world, and to raise him. No problem. It makes all sense to me. You think he did say that? <laughs> or after he woke up from his sleep, he was so confused and had many questions. How could he, this woman could be pregnant without a man. What the Holy Spirit did to Mary to be pregnant. How can this baby can save his people from their sin? How long will it take? What is he going to do? Who are his people? Why Mary? Why me? I'm sure if I were Joseph, that I have tons of questions to God. Even after angel told him about this pregnancy. Whether Joseph comprehend everything angel told him, or he was still so confused and having many questions, one thing for sure is that he was courageous enough to believe and obey the angel. You need the courage to believe. Joseph believed the angel enough to obey him. See, true faith will give us courage. True faith will give you Courage. We cannot follow Christ without courage. Jesus' disciples behaved like cowards when Jesus was dying on the cross. After three years of training, after three years pouring Jesus' heart, effort, time, love to disciples, when Jesus was dying on the cross, they all scared like cowards. But when they encountered Jesus, resurrected Jesus, they became courageous people. More than anybody in the whole world, they could live for Christ, they could die for Christ, because they became courageous. How much courage do you think that Joseph needed to accept God's calling and 
to raise this son of God. People might persecute him because the premarital pregnancy of Mary. They might just make fun of him. I mean, he heard this story, unbelievable one. Now, even if he decides to believe, who is he going to tell? Who is going to believe this crazy story? You know, one of the things in life that is so hard to carry is something that you know you believe, but other people cannot accept it, believe it. It's just going to just burst you. Like, like, how can you not see this? Joseph is going through that. We go through that. People might look at him and say, you must be crazy to even believe that story. How about the Jesus? I had son. I had son? I have son. <laughs> But I can imagine if when I was raising my son and the council thinking, oh, this baby will save his people from his sin. This baby is the son of God. It was hard enough to just raise a normal child. How hard is it going to be to raise the son of God? You now, when we read the story of Joseph, probably read so many times, and then sometimes, many times, we read very casually, oh, Joseph heard from Mary, he struggled. He had a dream. Angel came to him, and he obeyed the angel. I don't think it's that simple. I think Joseph struggled big time. Probably many, many more questions said, God, I need courage to believe this unimaginable, unthinkable, unbelievable story. Give me courage. That is why the angel came to him. And first thing the angel told Joseph is, do not fear. Do not fear. How many times does God come to you, even today, and telling you, do not fear, I am with you? He does to me. I get scared easy. He comes to me and says, do not fear, I am with you. Angel of the Lord came to Joseph, saying, do not fear, I am with you. I will be with you. God will be with you because you need the courage to go on with this Chosen life. Because chosen life is different life. Chosen life has a different purpose, different destination, different desire. You know why Christians saying that we are holy people? Holy means separated, different. I don't know when you look at yourself in the mirror and says, you are different because you're chosen by God. If we need the courage to love, we need the courage to forgive. You know how much courage I need to forgive some other people? You need the courage to serve. And you definitely need the courage to give. We talked about you know, the, uh, giving next Sunday. And the biggest struggle for the, a lot of Christians at church is giving. Because they're scared. They're scared. Because if I give this money, if I give this material, or if I give this time, and how can I get it back? I only have this much. And if I take this part of that to give to God or other people, how can I manage my life? They're scared. That is why they're not giving. That is why we're afraid to give. True faith requires courage. True faith will get courage from God. If we are Christian, we are chosen by God. If we are chosen by God, I hope we can live our chosen life, this courageous life, that you are not afraid of anything. You are not afraid of people. You are not afraid of circumstances because God is in control. And that's what happened to Joseph. Lord, I'm going to go and accept what you're telling me and believe because you gave me this courage. And the last one is chosen life is committed life, right? See, Joseph not only needed the courage, but also needed the commitment. He needed to commit himself to the angel of the Lord. In verse 25, said, but you her not until she had given birth to a son. That means even after they got together, Joseph did not have physical relationship with Mary for a whole year. Or until actually Jesus was born. It's like, you know? And then as he called his name Jesus, the reason he's not 
sleep with Mary because he committed himself what he's going to do. Lord, you're telling me to become adoptive father of Jesus Christ. You're telling me the fact that Mary is pregnant and he's son of God. I'm not going to get involved in that. You know? This is my commitment to you that I'll continue to do what I need to do to raise this child. See, commitment means action. Joseph did not just believe what the angel of the Lord said. He followed through with his action. Joseph's response to the angel of the Lord was not, thank you for explaining to me, angel. That's really remarkable. Let me see what I can do. His response was not, let me see what I can do. Or his response was not like, okay, I got it. I'll do it. Yes, of course. But, Angel, if it's too much pressure, I know I cannot even imagine I can handle this, but if it's too much pressure, can I quit? Can I quit being a adoptive father of the Son of God? I don't know whether I can handle it. See, Joseph's response was not that. The Bible does not describe at all. He just said, okay, I got it, and I will do it. Unimaginable, unthinkable, remarkable. Unbelievable, no matter what that may be, I decide to accept, I decide to obey, I decide to believe, I will do it. Say it with me, I will do it. This is what God wants to hear from his people. I will do it. You know, many people in the Bible did not say that. Moses did not say that. Jonah did not say that. They did not say, I will do it. Some other people married it, so be it. I'm your servant. He's amazing. So be it. Joseph today saying, I will do it. I will go all the way. I will commit myself to this amazing plan of yours. See, it is hard to find true commitment in this world these days. Many people said, I will quit because I'm not happy anymore. I will quit because it's too hard. I will quit because it's not convenient to me. See, it happens in our relationship, marriages, or friendship, or workplaces. It happens in our churches. It happens in ministries. It just breaks my heart to hear some of our friends, pastors, and hear say, I'm giving up. I cannot handle this anymore. Too much pressure, too much stress. I mean, there's stats out there. How many pastors are praying, thinking, and debating to quit the ministry every year? How about sports world? There's no team anymore. They all pick up teams. They change the team. When I was younger, younger, right? There's no team changes of the players during the season. But these days, they change the team after a couple of games. They change the school to become, uh, to be a build a better team. See, we all became money worshippers. We follow money. People follow money. But God chose us to be Jesus worshippers. God desired to see committed life to Christ. Ask yourself, are you living your life as a committed person? And if you are, what is this you're committed to? Or who is this you're committed to? We are here today to celebrate the birth of Christ. You know Christmas? Christmas is Christian celebration on coming of Christ. Christmas is Christian celebration on coming of Christ. So get excited and tell people about it. See, C.S. Lewis said, the Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. Are you chosen by God? I believe I am. I hope you do too. And if you are chosen by God, 
live your life as chosen people. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning, this amazing, remarkable place you allow us to come together and worship you together. So many people are celebrating birth of Christ. Unfortunately, the season becomes very secular or worldly, not related to you at all. But we, as believers, as children of yours, Lord, they understand the meaning and why you have to send your son to this world. Why Jesus had to die on the cross because we are so selfish and sinful. But we also know that we are chosen by you, Lord, because of our faith, because our realization of who we are. We now have path. We now have permission to become your child. So I pray, Lord, that we truly look at ourselves and understand who we are and realize that we are chosen by you to live our life as chosen people. Like Joseph did, like Mary did. Help us, God, that our life, realizing that our life has consequences, eternal one. We thank you, we honor you, we love you. Jesus Christ, am I praying?